Welcome to Market Week in Review for the week ending July 7th, 2023. I'm Sophie Antelgibert, and I'm joined today by my colleague and friend, Alex Kuzli, investment strategist for Russell Investments. Hi, Alex. How are you? I'm great, Sophie. How are you? It is great to see you, and thank you so much for coming into the office so early in Sydney to be able to chat with me today. Um, I'm really looking forward to picking your brain on a few different topics that relate actually a lot to Asia Pacific, to the region that you cover as an investment strategist. I'm hoping, first of all, that we can get some updates on central bank developments that have happened both in the U.S. and in Australia this week. Also, opportunities that you're seeing for fixed income investors. And then lastly, I'd love to get your thoughts on sort of an Asia-Pacific China roundup, what, what, what has been happening there and what is catching your eye at the moment. Sound good? Sounds great. All right, perfect. So maybe starting at the top, we have gotten some recent central bank developments, both in the Fed and the Australian Central Bank um, have had minutes released and meetings recently held. Um, what is What are you paying attention to there? And what do you think that investors should be paying attention to? Yeah, so starting with the Fed, we got the minutes released and you know the minutes really highlight the fact that the board still think there's a couple more rate rises that might be required to bring the economy back into an even balance. We have seen a fair bit of rebalancing or a bit of rebalancing in the labor market with wage growth coming down without the expense of job losses as uh, as yet. But you know, Paul Eidemann has talked about this before. There's still more work to be done. We got the ADP employment report uh, today. We're recording this on Thursday. That was nearly 500,000 jobs on that report. So that's pretty strong. And that's much stronger than what the Fed would like to see. So, you know, they're still kind of pointing towards more work to be done. In Australia, it's been really interesting. It's kind of exciting as an Australian to be able to talk about the Reserve Bank of Australia. Uh, normally, it's not a big deal. They had surprised the market the last two times in terms of hiking rates again after going on pause in April. And we've come back to a pause now. Uh, you know, the economy here is slowing quite a bit. The Australian mortgage market is very different to the US. We don't have 30 year fixed. So a lot of households are now starting to experience pretty dramatic increases in repayments and that's leading to the consumer slowing. There is still the risk that we get one more rate hike uh, out of the RBA, just given that inflation is still well above target. But we think we're very close to the peak uh, in terms of the cash rate here in Australia. And all eyes really turn to the inflation report at the end of the month and whether that kind of comes in above expected. And if that is the case, then we probably get a hike next month. Speaking of rates rising, where do you see opportunities in fixed income at the moment? So we've had another backup in government bonds this week. You know, the US 10-year bond is back above 4%, 405 as we're talking right now. We still think that there's attractive opportunities to be at play within government bonds, particularly on that longer end in the five-year part of the curve. Uh, the reason for that is firstly that we see pretty attractive valuation. The second reason is that when we look at our sentiment measures, and sentiment is a really important part of our process, we're seeing that the market is on not complete one side, but fairly one sided in terms of where rates are going, they think it's going to go up. And so the catalyst for rates to move lower actually is, is not that high. And the third is that given we're worried about recession risk, we think recession risk is elevated over the next 12 months. In the world where we see recession, we think central banks will have to cut rates and probably cut rates by more than the market is expecting. So those three kind of factors really lead us to think that government bonds across most uh, countries right now are offering pretty attractive opportunities. Switching gears, you you focus on Asia Pacific. You're based in Sydney. You're you're in that time zone. You're focused on that, um, and in that region, what is catching your eye, and what are you paying especially close attention to right now in the sort of writ large Asia Pacific region and China that you think investors globally should be aware of? Yeah, so actually, it's a, a kind of nice segue to the last question about government bonds. The one area where government bonds don't look attractive in value is in Japan. And we're actually seeing Japan, after 25 years of trying to get inflation back to 2%, we're starting to get towards that level where it could be sustained. So services inflation, which has been the part that has caused central bankers around the world a bit of problems, uh, that is now moving towards 2% in Japan. The reopening trade that everyone in most countries have kind of forgotten about Japan's now going through it and actually experiencing a proper reopening with foreigners coming back for holidays. And so that that impulse is starting to come through into prices and they're moving closer to a point at which they can adjust their monetary policy again after the December surprise. I think the other big story is obviously China. Um, you know, China has had a pretty had a strong reopening through Q1 and it's faded pretty quickly. 
we didn't think that it was going to be sustained at that level. We thought that the, you know a lot of economists were getting a bit excited at that five and a half six percent level. We're now at a point that we're getting very close to the next Politburo meeting, so the Chinese uh, Communist Party will meet. And there is expectations that there will be more stimulus put to work just to try and get the economy back on, you know, a better um, a better position because most of the pressures that we had last year, so property market is still a problem that hasn't really improved. Property developers are still under stress. So there's more stimulus that probably needs to come. It's whether or not July is the actual appropriate date or whether we see kind of it pushed, you know, keep the can down the road for another couple of months. So, you know, the economy is still looking like 5% GDP growth. Um, you know, we are, we are seeing the market come back towards us in terms of those expectations of stronger growth. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Alex. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for today, but I really appreciate you joining us and sharing your insights with us this morning. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. We'll be back again soon. Hi, I'm Eric Ristovan, Chief Investment Strategist for Russell Investments. If you like what you saw in this video and want to see more like it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.